should. Oh, what did I do with my water? Water, water. Hey, kia ora. Helen Brown's here. Come to live from Sun City in Arizona. Hope you're having a super fantastic, sparkling day. <laughs> it's the weekend. Yay. Um, what fun are you having today? We, yesterday we talked about a lot of different fun ideas on things to do. Um, one of the things we talked about was travel. Just, just a little bit in there about travel. So tonight I figured, why not talk about places that we want to go? Traveling near and far. Um, we're traveling far and wide so we're gonna skip the u.s destinations for now and start looking at different destinations some of the top destinations around the world that people are wanting to wanting to travel to um some still have some strict res strict restrictions in place others are open and accepting visitors some will accept visitors um but you know put it this way just talk to a travel professional about where you want to go and they will let you know what um, travel requirements you need as far as um, what precautions they have in place for COVID and you know, vaccinations, that sort of thing. Um, what tests you require before you board a plane, before you board a cruise ship, all of that sort of stuff. Talk with your travel professional because based on where you're going, there are some different requirements. Let's just put it that way but first things first is make sure your passport is up to date and if your passport is going to expire in the, within the next 12 months i would seriously consider getting it renewed now i don't know what the wait time is um, but i know that there was back um, backlogs for a while there i don't know if backlogs are still in place um, but the sooner you get them renewed the better for when you want to travel um, so let's start talking destinations oh so many and I've been watching friends on Facebook as they're all going to all these beautiful places. Some are on cruise ships, some are on land, and they're all travel professionals currently traveling right now. Um, and I'm just like adding stuff to my list. I have a very long list of places I want to go to, and I'm sl and yes, these places are all going to be part of um, some of our before the dirt nap adventures. Why don't, you know, I'm going to go places that other people want to go, but I also want to cross off my list as well. Um, so <laughs> some of the places will be things that I want to do and see as well. Um, and I'm just going to take some friends with me. It's sort of like, you know, we'll go traveling together. Do you want to go as well? Let's travel together. It's as simple as that. So what type of things we're going to be looking at? So let's talk about some of the places. What are some of the places you want to go? What are some of the things you want to experience that you can only do if you go to a certain destination um one of the things that is um and i'm just going to go through some of the stuff on my travel list and some of it may resonate with you some of it may not um let's see where do i even start that's the next question is where do i even start um suddenly it's got very warm in this corner here <laughs> i have like no air circulation in this area unless this ac unit right here is on and then i get a nice cool breeze i think it's switched over and you don't get two breeze you don't get the two acs working together with the compressor on they alternate which AC and I think the front one's got it on right now because it suddenly got very warm right here um, so where do we even start well first of all when you're looking up things that you want to just go through travel magazines start with travel oh, I should have put my travel magazines up start with travel magazines start looking through those um, and getting ideas of places you want to go you know it could be things that you've heard people have come back from vacations um, and you've said oh that'd be a really cool place to go one of the top ones on my list is the Galapagos. Um, that's a place I've wanted to go to for years. We were heading there in 2020, towards the end of towards the end of the year, and of course, the global pause happened, so we didn't get to go. But that's still one of the things at the top of my list, and that will probably be the only one we're going to repeat the itinerary on, only because we never got the itinerary done. So um, we're going to be looking around and um, talking with the vendor again to see if they're still going to that area if we're still able to do the um the trip that we were looking to do to see if we we're able to complete to start and complete that travel trip to the galapagos but it included um seven nights in ecuador before we flew to the Gal galapagos and then it was um seven nights in peru afterwards including two nights up at, Ma at machu picchu so that one depending on we've got to talk to the vendors again and see if we're able to do that one it may not be the exact plan we had last time but hopefully something similar to it 
Um, but yes, we're going to be contacting vendors and start looking at what's possible right now that we can do, things we can start putting together. But the Galapagos will definitely be one that is on our list to do. Um, so keep your eyes and ears open for that one. Um, let's see what else have we got on there. Um, Safari in Africa. <sighs> um, I've got a travel professional who um, who's an expert on safaris in Africa. So I'm going to be talking with her and seeing what we can come up, what ideas we can come up with for doing um, a safari in Africa. But we're going to make it a little bit different. I mean, there's so much. Africa is such a huge continent. And there is so much different stuff that we can do in Africa as far as safaris go based on the time of the year, what animals are where, you know, seeing migrations and that sort of stuff um, and different other activities that we're going to build in there, like maybe a visit to the Victoria Falls. Um, if we're down near South Africa, we'll go um, that one, um, do safari down there. Um, it could be going to Rwanda and visiting the gorillas. It could be, um, oh, I'm trying to think, I think it's Nairobi where they have the giraffe mansion and having breakfast with giraffes. Um, you know, just, just really cool stuff like that that's going to be included in some of the itineraries that we do based on how much time we're going to be gone and what we want to see and do when we're there. Um, then there could be even, let's see, what else have we got on that list? I should have pulled up my mind map of this one. <laughs> there will definitely be trips to New Zealand and Australia and the South Pacific. Um, how can I not do trips down there? Um, and, you know, we're going to take you some amazing places within New Zealand that not a lot of travellers know, not a lot of tourists know about, or that very rarely see tourists. Um, we, in the place, some of the places we're going to take you, it is more likely to have travellers go there because the travellers know about it and the tourists don't. And what's the difference between a traveller and a tourist? A tourist is somebody who just goes to see the sites, you know, they're, that's all they're there for. You know, they go to Rome, they want to see the Colosseum, they want to see Vatican City, they want to see, um, you know, all the um, all the regular touristy stuff there. They go to Greece, they want to see um, all the stuff that's there as well, all the ruins and everything else. They want to go to Egypt and see just the pyramids. There is so much more to these to these countries than just, you know, they want to go to Florence and or um, Pisa and see the Leaning Tower. And that's that's all they want to do. They don't want to get off the beaten path. They want to stay on, they're the people that stay on the beaten path and do the touristy stuff. Um, and they stick out like a mile away. You can you can spot a tourist a mile away. A traveler is somebody who goes to experience the culture. They want to immerse themselves in the culture. They want to spend a little, rather than doing 27 countries in two and you know seven days type of thing through Europe, they would rather visit two to three countries over 27 days. Um, they want to spend the time there. They want to immerse themselves in the culture. They want to get off the beaten path. They want to go to the the, play, the restaurants that the locals go to, not the ones that the tourists go to. They want to see the um, the stuff that the tourists don't know about. It's almost like a behind the scenes look at a country. Um, if you think about a play, the tourists come to see the play on stage. A traveler, yes, they will see the play on stage, but they want to go wandering behind the scenes and see everything um, beyond the curtains at the back of the stage. They want that backstage pass. And that's what a traveler is. A traveler is somebody who, yes, they will watch the play, but they've got their backstage pass in their hands and they're going to make the most of it and go and talk with the actors and the actresses and, and the production crew and everybody else. They want to get back there and immerse themselves in the culture behind the scenes. And that's basically what a traveler does in the country. Yes, they will go see some of the, some of the sites and everything else, but they really want to get off the beaten path. And, um, and just go meet the locals and talk with the locals if they can. Um, one of our trips that we did to, um, we did a river cruise back in 2011 and we spent three nights in Prague. Um, and then we were taken by bus down to Nuremberg where we got on the river boat and sailed down the river um, to um, Budapest. And the three, night, the three nights, Sorry, the two nights we had in Prague. It was two nights, not three. Again. <laughs> I tell you, Prague is a fascinating city. It's awesome. Um, and what we did, and what we didn't realize at the time, was how close a Christmas market was to it, or what happened at a Christmas market at night. But we learned this lesson. And we were there in December, so we were there to see the Christmas markets, which were absolutely amazing, especially when you got away um, from the booths that were sort of like the... Um, 
they obviously manufacture one, not the little mum and pop hand, handcraft type booths. Those were the best ones. Um, but we got to see, and we made this mistake on the night that we, um, we had done a walking tour around Prague that day. And then in the evening, some went off to do, um, there was a couple of optional activities you could have gone and done, and Brad and I chose not to do those. So we made the mistake of having dinner at the hotel and then wandering down to the Christmas markets. And afterwards, we were like, well, that's a big mistake. We should have skipped because the Christmas markets were only a city block away. Um, and it was a long block, but this, and we were at the, was it Intercontinental? The Intercontinental Hotel, and we walked down the street, which would have been Prague's equivalent to Rodeo Drive. It's the only thing we could think of it, because it was all these designers, high-end designer stores, and um, it was actually kind of cool walking down there, and they had the, the trees all lit up lining the street, and you emptied into this big square, and there was this cathedral around the corner, and the cathedral is the astronomical, um, astrolo um, yeah, astronomical clock, astrology clock. I think astronomical it was to do with astronomy and to do with astrology this clock it's an it's an incredible piece of of um of, of um mechanics considering when it was built and the story behind it is really really cool um but we were in the square and there were a whole bunch of booths open there were no tourists there they had all gone it was full of locals and there were even more booths that were open in the evening than were open during the day. And there was a lot of food places open. And we're like, why didn't we know about this? So I am telling you now, if you are traveling through Europe and when the Christmas markets are open and there's one close to your hotel and you happen to be staying overnight in the hotel, don't eat in the hotel. Go to the Christmas market because that is some of the best food down there. Um, and you get to mingle with the locals. You get to absorb. And we just sat on this little brick wall and just people watched and just absorbed what was happening before us. And uh, yeah, it was cold sitting on that wall, but you know, we had a great time down there. And we found a place where we got some, what did we get, hot chocolate? Oh, that was good. It was good hot chocolate. And we had dessert down there as well. Um, but we were sort of like, damn, we should have come down here for dinner. So lesson learned <laughs> that when at the end of the trip when we had to spend three nights in Budapest, um, we got the 72 hour pass in Budapest and that gave us free reign over all the trans the public transportation within the city so we could do the trams, the buses, the trains, um, we could go anywhere in the city, um, both sides of the river um, and it was with this pass and uh, we would take it down to the Christmas markets every night. We still had a block to a uh, block or two to walk once we got off the, the train and it was there like the subway system we got off that and we set out a couple of blocks to walk but we felt safe walking and walking from the train station down to the um christmas market so we had the best food down there and then the first night we were down there brad um i said to brad and brad says oh you want some dessert i says yeah he says what do you feel like i says i don't know surprise me and he came back and um he came back with two different desserts and the one he gave me and he knows how much i I'm not a big white chocolate fan. To me, white chocolate is not chocolate because it doesn't have cacao in it. Um, and that's what gives it the chocolate flavor. And, but anyway, he put in front of me a white chocolate apple strudel. I will tell you here and now, that is the best. To this day, it is still the best apple strudel I have ever had. I can still taste it on my tongue and that were, and I can still taste it in my mouth. I can still smell it. Um, and that was back in December of 2011. Um, we're here in 2022, you know, almost 11 years later, and I can still taste this apple strudel and I can still smell it. And um, I said, where'd you get this from? He says, oh, from that little cart over there. I says, okay. I had it for the next two nights. <laughs> it was so good. I wasn't even trying anything else on the menu. He said, I just went down the menu until I saw something that had chocolate in it. <laughs> That's what he did. He stood there at the menu and that was written in, in Hungarian as well as in English. And he went down until he, rec until he found one that had chocolate. And it, and it happened to be a white chocolate apple strudel. It was the best. And he goes, can I have a taste? I went, no, <laughs> you get your own. <laughs> I would not even share it with him. It was that good. Um, but we had a blast there. And we went down to the market, which is in this humongous warehouse. And it's all fresh produce, fresh meats, fresh bakery, all these herbs and spices. And then they had um, a floor, an open floor up above where all the artisans were up there with their goods, you know, the handmade that hand embroidered tablecloths and um, 
they'd also um, crocheted like doilies and things like that and there were these um, beautiful wooden dolls that had been made and um, hand-bound journals <laughs> I love hand uh, you know they were, they were, and, then, and the people were sitting there in their booths in this market making whatever it was they were selling so you could actually talk to the person who was making the goods um, it was a cool place up there and we got to the bakery and uh, they had these things, I would have called them custard squares, because um, in New Zealand you put this pastry down, then you put this thick custard on top, and it's got to be thick because it's got to be gelatinous. Then you put another layer of pastry on top, and then you ice it with vanilla icing or chocolate icing, and um, you cut them into squares, and these are these custard squares. And they had something that looked similar to that, and I kid you not, these things were like about this tall, and it was about, about this long, and about this wide and it was made with puff pastry as well so i got one of those brad found something else and those we did share and uh, we found a table to sit down and eat one time. and that basically i mean those things were so filling that that was our breakfast for the morning <laughs> we had dessert for breakfast <laughs> you need to do things like that when you're on vacation but um that was in budapest and budapest was an amazing city their architect and their architecture was just gorgeous and i remember coming in um as we're coming into budapest um, it's very, it was all clouded and misted over and there was this beautiful castle that kept up here and it was, we're coming, um, I don't even know what direction we're heading, but we're heading down this part of the river and over on this side, there was this gorgeous palace that kept appearing and disappearing with the clouds as your, as the morning fog was playing, it was playing with us, it was giving us little glimpses of what Budapest looked like. And um, it turned out it wasn't a palace. It was actually their parliamentary buildings. So if you've ever been to Budapest or seen pictures of their parliamentary buildings, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, it was a gorgeous, gorgeous building. Um, but the palace was actually up on the hills over on this side, closest to us. Um, but it was just a beautiful city to come in and there was this misty thing. And then that evening we actually overnighted in Budapest and we disembarked the next day. And so that evening, um, we did a night cruise up and down the river. Um, so you got to see Budapest at night, and it was just be it was beautiful. Um, we had a lot of fun there. Um, we got to spend three days there afterwards because we arrived on a Friday, and we had blackout dates on our airline miles, so we couldn't fly Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. But Monday was the first flight we could get out, and so like three days in Budapest, yeah. And so um, Brad had a whole bunch of merit reward points, and so we used those to pay for our hotel in Budapest and it was a courtyard and it was uh, it was really funny we get to the room and I'm like looking out the window and I go oh he goes what and I said look what's across the road and there was a McDonald's right across the road <laughs> we just started laughing we we're like we ain't going there and um, but we were right there um, the, um, we were on the corner and then looking at the street that went straight ahead from our room um, where the McDonald's was on the corner that was the tram line that was where the tram line went down to its depot and then came out and then started its route right in front of us and so we had a bus station down there we had the um the tram cars there and there was also the entry into the subway right there by our hotel at the corner so it was a really good location we had a grocery store just around the the corner from where we were um so we had plenty of stuff within walking distance and if we wanted to go we were we had our little 72 hour pass and off we would turtle and go looking around and we had already done a drive tour around um around Budapest because when we arrived the day before on that first day we had arrived where they'd actually put us on buses and taken us on a driving tour around and there were some places we got off and had a look around and, um but it was a fantastic city so um I do want to go back to Europe I am I want to go spend some more time there Nuremberg was a fascinating city um they were showing us we were up at the castle there in Nuremberg and uh we had a really cool guide and he had he had this binder full of black and white photographs from world war ii and he would point out like things and he'd go okay see that yellow building down there yeah well here's the photo of what it looked like after nuremberg had been bombed and he said that this building here in that picture that's that yellow building right there and we're like looking at this picture and it's the only building standing everything else around it was rubble and we're like jeepers because um, Nuremberg was one of the main depots during World War II for the Germans and uh, so the Allies of course tried to destroy it and he was showing us pictures and saying now that building over there that's this one here in the photograph and so you could see what had been destroyed during that time um, it was just it was just a fascinating city a fascinating history and everything else um, so I want to go back and explore more 
I want to go back and see more of that. I also want to go up into Scandinavia because apparently I have some Scandinavian blood in me with Swedish, Norwegian. I have Norwegian, Swedish, and Danish in me. And um, I've always, um, ever since I learned to say the word Copenhagen, I've always wanted to go there. Don't ask me what the pull is there. And then, of course, yes, later on, Joe Dane test. I've got some Dane in me. Oh, interesting. No wonder I've got a pull up there. There in Norway were the two places I kept getting pulled to. And I have ancestry from my DNA says I come from those areas. So I'm sort of like, now I understand the pull. It's like I also want to go to the UK and um, go to England and Ireland and Scotland and Wales. And because I also have blood from there as well. And um, do a, I actually want to do a genealogy tour through England and go down to Cornwall and visit all the places that a lot of my ancestors came from and then work my way up to um, to Huntingdon, which is now part of Cambridge, and go visit Warboys, which is um, where my hang on, third great-grandparents were, third and fourth great-grandparents were in that house, um, and visit that area. I also want to go up into Scotland, which is where my Scottish heritage comes from, up around Inverness in the Ross and Cromarty area. Um, we've got also got relatives over in Ireland as well, so I want to go over there and check that out. Um, my second great-grandmother was born in the police barracks in Dublin, Ireland, so I want to go check that out. So there's all these different places that you can go to, and you can also, you know, if it's just a place you want to go, but also too, what is in your genealogy that you could then go back and trace your ancestry? You know, why did, why did your um, ancestors leave the country they were in and came to wherever it is they ended up, you know, Australia, New Zealand, US, Canada. Um, the ones that came out of that manor house in War Boys, there was some that stayed in England, some went to Canada, some went to the US, some went to um, New Zealand, some to Australia. In fact, one of the ones that came to, to the US um, ended up being a stunt person in Hollywood. And he used to double, um, used to be Steve McQueen's double in the movie, um, The Great Escape. So when you see um, Steve McQueen's character riding the motorcycle at the end there and getting tangled up in the wire, that's a distant cousin of mine. Um, so there was that sort of thing as well. Um, so very interesting, you know, history stuff. You know, where do you want to go? Um, Dubai is another favorite of mine I would love to go to. Um, that city is has just exploded over the years. But the thing that got me most interested in Dubai was I watched a documentary on the Burj Al Arab, which is that hotel that looks like a big sail that sits just off the coast. It's got that little coastal road that connects it to the land. And the reason that they put it out there on its own little island is because it's actually its own little country there on the island because they can serve alcohol there, whereas they can't in Dubai. And so that was kind of interesting learning about all of that. And uh, it's a, the only seven star hotel in the, in the world. And the first time I saw that, I looked at Brad and I said, I want to go stay there a night, at least one night just to experience it. And he's sort of like, do you know how much it's going to cost us? I don't care. I said, I am going to spend at least one night in that hotel. When it will be, I don't know, but that it's been in my list for a very, very long time. But they've also got these massive malls where you can go skiing in them. And so I was sort of like, yeah, cool to go see. Uh, <laughs> just, I want to go stay in a seven star hotel, but even if it's one, maybe two nights and just to experience it. Um, and to say, you know, I finally crossed that off my list. So that's definitely on my list. Um, Egypt, I've got um, an acquaintance there in Egypt right now, and she is posting the most incredible photographs and videos daily of her trip in Egypt right now. And I am just like, I so want to go. Um, she's going through, you know, going through all the different, um, all the different pyramids and the different statues and the different um, ways the Egyptians have um, honored their, their kings and their queens and all of this all through Egypt. And she's posting the most amazing photographs, doing the most incredible videos. And I'm like, I saw what the goal. And that's been another one that's been on my list. So that's definitely going into the Before the Dirt Nap Adventures is a trip to Egypt and um, going riding on camels and uh, maybe doing a cruise down the Nile. Um, but yeah, I, I just have this huge pull to Egypt as well. Um, don't know why, but it's just a place that's always fascinating. I guess because of the history that is there is thousands and thousands of years of history in that place. Um, and just seeing all the photos that she's posting and the videos, it's just sort of like, I so want to go. Um, Greece is another place. Um, doing the Greek Isles. 
um, but going to Athens and seeing the beginning of the Olympic Games. Um, I've always been a huge lover of sports. Love watching the Commonwealth Games. Love watching and the Commonwealth Games are for those that belong to the British Commonwealth. Um, they're actually on right now, and New Zealand is doing very well. They've, they've actually won quite a few medals, um, especially in the cycling. We did really well in the cycling, but I think that was one of the first events. I haven't checked today to see what their medal count is at, but they were actually doing pretty cool, and that's currently taking place in England right now. Um, so. Um, but I haven't been online today to check to see how they're doing. But every time I've gone on my Facebook feed, there's another medal, another medal, another medal. And they're winning gold, silvers, bronzes. So proud of my Kiwi my Kiwi team over there. Um, what do we get to? Oh, yeah, so the Olympic Games. The Olympic Games started in, you know, in Athens, Greece. I'd love to go see um, the, the origin, where it, be, where it all began. Um, so I thought that would be really cool and go see the... Um, I can see all these images in my head, but for life me, I can't think of half the names of them half the time. I'm doing very bad on that right now, but I have an excellent memory, but it's just not cooperating with me right now. <laughs> but I'd love to go to Greek because I've always been fascinated with Greeks, with Greek myths and legends. And so I'd love to go to the places where these myths and legends take place and hear the stories behind how they became myths and legends. Because um, sometimes, um, what is it that Mark Twain says that Truth is stranger than fiction. That's why fiction is something like that. Truth, it's, it's no wonder that, hang on. He's, Mark Twain once said, it's no wonder that truth is stranger than fiction. Fiction has to make sense. And so a lot of times that's how the myths and legends get started is because the truth was just too strange. So they had to come up with a way of telling the story that people would believe. Um, and that's where your myths and legends come from. Um, and they get passed down through time and they get altered through time as you know from one storyteller to another to another remember playing that game when you were a kid with where you somebody would whisper something in one ear and you'd have to turn around and whisper it to the person next to you and then the message would go around the circle and by the time it got back to the beginning it was nothing like what <laughs> it started with as people had changed one word or two from what they heard to what came out of their mouth next there was a change that had taken place in that and so myths and legends have changed over the years as the stories get told and but once they started being able to um, write things down the legends didn't change as much but those that had the, that have had the um that have had the culture where nothing has been written down those myths and legends take on little changes as time goes on so it would be cool to go to the, to the greek to, um, to Greece and the Greek Isles and stuff and just learn about some of the myths and legends over there and how they all got and how some of them got started and things like that so that's place that, it's just the history there in Greece that's always attracted me to Greece as well and the Greek Isles just fascinate me um, and all those beautiful pictures of the white buildings and the blue ocean and um, yeah that's just been a really cool one uh, <laughs> what else have we got out there um, that we've talked about um, that I want to that's on my list to do um, just doing some of the South Pacific Islands I mean I've done the Cook Islands which is just an incredible place I mean if you want to go somewhere where time stands still literally it stands still <laughs> we flew in we left LA we got on the plane we did our 10-hour flight down to um, down to the down to Rarotonga we got off the plane um, this is when we had a group there was 10 of us there was eight travel professionals and our two guides and um, we got picked up at the airport. We got on. In fact, the airport, the whole airport experience of being checked in through customs was absolutely hilarious. Um, we're standing there in line with our passports to go through passport control. You could see the conveyor belt for the bags on the other side. Sitting in the middle of the conveyor belt up on a, up on a little ledge, there was this guy sitting there playing his guitar and singing and all of that. And as he's seeing regulars come off the plane, he stops and he goes, Hey, John, you're back again. Good to see you. <laughs> he's just calling out to pe the regular people that come to Rarotonga a lot and that he's gotten to know over the years. And it seems like everybody who's on the islands know who knows this guy. And he seems to know everybody, all the regulars and, and the locals as well. And so we got, uh, got our bags and our um, customs with these two people standing either side of the door. You just hand them the forms and walk on through. And our bus was there. It took us to the hotel. We had um, like two hours just to rest, relax, get changed. Um, after our flight, and I was keyed up. I was like, let's get going. And then we went and we did this, um, went site visiting to different hotels 
on the island um, and we went to one where they gave us lunch then we went and saw another like two or three then we went to an, another one in the evening where they gave us dinner we're actually sitting there on the beach sand in our toes out sand in our toes our, our toes in the sand the chairs the tables were all sitting on sand on the beach and the most incredible sunset taking place right outside that we could see um, the food was amazing um, and then they then they had hokey pokey ice cream. Oh, I was in heaven. <laughs> as soon as I heard that hokey pokey ice cream, I says, I'll I'll I'll, I'll take some of that. And uh, I'm like, what's hokey pokey ice cream? I says, nothing you've ever had before. And it's just it's this toffee. Hokey pokey is like this toffee that's aerated, an aerated toffee. I don't know how to describe, it, but it's just sugar and golden syrup melted mixed together you throw in a thing of baking soda at the end and you whip it really fast because it froths and then you have to get it poured into pans really really quick because it sets really really fast um ask me how i know um yes i've made it a few times over the years <laughs> and we put them in crunchy bars which is just taking log size of these things and coating them in chocolate and then if you get the really good hokey pokey ice cream there's actually chunks of hokey pokey in the ice cream although it seems most of the ones i've had these days just got ribbons of it through and i'm like Where's the crunch? There's no crunch anymore. I like the crunch. Um, but yeah, so we got to the, and then the next morning, um, we had to be back down at the main office by um, 6.50 in the morning to head to the airport to catch our fly, a flight from Rarotonga across to Arataki, one of the ones that's got this beautiful lagoon on it. And if you have ever seen Survivor Cook Islands, Arataki Lagoon is where everything was filmed. It was all filmed there. If you've ever seen the Sports Illustrated, um, swimsuit edition with on the beaches and stuff that's all done around the lagoon on Arataki. It's just incredible. It is there's such blue blue water and we're flying across this thing and you can see you can see down into the bottom of the lagoon and oh the water was so clear. It was just gorgeous and we had and we got on and we were taken over to this hotel where we had they gave us breakfast and then we got taken on a walking tour and then we were taken down to the pier there and we hopped on Tabaka. Tabaka is a um, Polynesian catamaran and uh, we had such a blast and we got there and there's a table there for us and we each had a fresh coconut there with a straw sticking out of it. Um, so we had you know fresh coconut water straight out of the coconut um, and we had Katu was our guide for the day and uh, he comes over and, he's, and he knew that we were the travel agents, the travel agent table. And he goes, oh, when did you guys arrive? And, and we just like looked at him blankly and went, when did, when was it yesterday? When did we arrive? Was it yesterday or the day before? We had, the time had literally stood still and we felt like we, we had been there more than 24 hours. And we're just like, was it yesterday we arrived? Because we had already done so much. And we actually went to one hotel, which wasn't even on our list, but they had heard that we were in town, so called and said, can you stop by on your way to the airport? And this is as we're getting ready to leave Rarotonga to fly to New Zealand. And so we stopped at this place and we were in their bar area and <laughs> the clock had no hands on it. All the numbers are laying at the bottom of the clock along with the hands. That was, and it just had Cook Island time written on it. It was perfect. I have a picture of it somewhere. But you know, there's, there's islands out there that I haven't been to yet, like Samoa and Norfolk Island and Nui and, um, um, Tahiti and Bora Bora um, and some of the other society islands, you know, it's just the, you got Tahiti and the society islands, of which Bora, Bora Bora is one of them. Um, and uh, Samoa, Western Samoa, American Samoa, Fiji. Fiji is another place I want to go to. So there's all these different places that are just incredible. And it just depends on the experience that you want. Um, people going down to New Zealand and Australia, it's always do Australia first, then New Zealand. And if you want to put on one of the Pacific Islands, like the Cook Islands, you do that last on your way home. Um, and there's a whole bunch of reasoning behind that, but we'll talk about that another day as to why you do it in that order. Um, and, uh, but it's just been, it's, you know, I mean, there's so many incredible places around the world to go visit. Um, Asia is another area I want to go, thousands and thousands of years of history there. Um, you know, you got China and Japan just, and Vietnam, Cambodia with incredible, incredible history and culture. And I just want to go experience it all. Um, tell me a place in the world and I'll probably want to go. <laughs> My list is long and extensive. So where are some of the, so take out, you know, take out a piece of paper and either mind map it or list it. So some of the places that you want to go, where do you want to go in the world? 
Um, what are some of the things that you want to experience? Um, you know, there's certain places like I want to go to Jamaica and I want to visit Goldeneye. Goldeneye is the name of the house uh, in Fleming's house there where he actually sat and did some of his writing. Um, there's a pub in um, in England near um, is it near near one of the spy place, spy headquarter places um, where he actually started writing about James Bond. But Goldeneye was his retreat where he would go and he did a lot of writing down there. So I'd love to go and visit Goldeneye to because I'm a huge James Bond fan. Come on. <laughs> so are you a fan of something like that? You know, are you a musical fan? And you know, maybe you want to go visit um, a legend's gravesite or something like that. Um, there's, you know, different places around the world to go and experience different things. And, you know, do you want to go to a Mardi Gras in New Orleans? Or do you want to go to, um, oh, where's that place? There's a place in Germany that does the pumpkin festival every, like, um, September through November. And you walk through this park and everything's made out of pumpkins. You got a tractor, it's all made out of pumpkins. You go over here, there's a snail, it's all made out of pumpkins. Um, maybe you want to go to Monte Carlo and watch the Formula One Grand Prix. Um, that's another one that's on the list. <laughs> go to Monte Carlo and uh, there's actually a cruise line that will actually berth in the harbour there while the Grand Prix is on. And uh, they have different things that you can do while you're there while the Grand Prix is on. Um, maybe you want to play some of the, some of the top golf courses around the world um things like that maybe it's that you want there's um you want to go watch some of the golf tournaments around the world um maybe there's a sporting event that you want to go see you want to go experience like maybe the final of the of the fa cup um it could be that you know you might want to go to an olympic games or a commonwealth games um it could be you just want to go sailing you want to go sailing around the caribbean in a in a yacht or you want to go sailing around the mediterranean in a yacht or around the pacific um, there's so much, this world has so much to offer. What is it that you want to see and do and experience? Maybe there's hiking trails that you want to do around the world. Maybe you want to go climbing some of the, some of the biggest mountains in the world. Maybe you don't want to climb the biggest mountains in the world, just some of the smaller ones. Um, you know, what is it that you want? Maybe it's skiing. Maybe you want to travel around the world and ski um, and go to different ski fields each season or something. You know, here's a really cool one. So for the avid ski fans, those that absolutely love to go skiing, you've got the winter up here in the Northern Hemisphere where you can go to the ski fields and go skiing and all of that across Christmas time and, you know, whatever the ski season is. Well, during summer vacation time with kids in school and that, you know, your kids love to go skiing and snowboarding. During summer vacation, why not hop down to New Zealand? We have some world-class skiing down there in New Zealand at that time of the year because we're opposite seasons. And you even have some of the top, world's top skiers who will go down to places like New Zealand and practice during the off season. Um, sometimes they'll have skiing competitions down there during that time because, you know, opposite seasons. It's summer. Go somewhere for winter. Or if you're in if you're in summer, if you're in winter up here, go somewhere for summer. You know, go to the lower you know, go experience Christmas in the southern hemisphere. Um, in Australia and New Zealand at Christmas time. It's in the middle of summer. <laughs> yeah, we don't, we don't we don't do the big cook meals in the, winter, in the summertime. It's cold meat and salads, and um, maybe maybe a Christmas pudding, which is hot with hot custard. Um, and you know, look at so when you're traveling, look at what season is it going to be there? Am I going below the equator? And if I go below the equator, you've got to remember it's opposite seasons to what it is here in the U.S. So start thinking of things like that. You know, you want to go experience and you, you want to go experience Christmas in the middle of summer. Go south. <laughs> go away so um you know you got australia and new zealand you can go to and you can go surfing in australia at christmas you know i mean how cool would that be something different that you've never done before um another thing that it's one thing that we do offer um at before before the dirt nap adventures is um one of the things we offer people is skip your birthday some people don't like celebrating their birthdays so we say fine you can leave the u.s here the day before your birthday. So say your birthday is um, July 25th. So on July 24th, we'll fly you down to Australia or New Zealand. You will arrive on July 26th because you've crossed that international dateline. It is now, you have now skipped your birthday, but we tell you, do not turn your phones on. Do not get online because everybody will still be wishing you happy birthday because it's your birthday back in the States, but you have missed it because you're now somewhere and you've completely skipped that date. Um, then there we have the reverse where you can celebrate your birthday in 
four hemispheres and two countries on the same day. How do I do that? Well, if you're visiting Australia and New Zealand, you celebrate your birthday there. So again, we'll use July 25th. And you on July 25th, you celebrate your birthday in Australia or New Zealand. You hop on a plane that evening. You fly back to the States. When you land back in either San Francisco or LA, it's still your birthday. <laughs> you have just flown through the Northern Hemisphere, the Southern Hemisphere, Eastern and Western Hemispheres, and you've landed in the US, and it's still your birthday. So you can either skip your birthday or extend your birthday. Completely up to you. That's another option that we have. Um, so... <laughs> And trust me, I have had people that I don't like celebrating birthdays. I go, right, fine. We'll send you here and that way you won't have to celebrate your birthday. You won't even have to acknowledge the day because you're leaving the US at like, you know, 9 p.m., 10 p.m. at night, flying across the international dateline. You've completely missed your birthday. And it's two days later and you've completely missed your birthday. And it's like, I like that idea. And then other people are sort of like, how do I extend my birthday? Well, let me show you this way. But anyway. I am way out of time. Get me talking about topics that I love and I can go on forever. And I know there's a whole bunch of other countries and experiences that we haven't even covered. I haven't even covered what's down in South America yet or Antarctica um, and that sort of stuff too. So there's a whole slew of things that um, that you can do or Russia. We haven't even talked about um, the Eastern um, Eastern Europe. Um, you know, there's a, there's a whole world out there of different things that you can experience. So what are some of the things you want to experience? What are some festivals you've heard of? What are some sporting events you want to go visit and see? Um, you know, start thinking about, you know, well, I like watching golf. Well, I'd like to go see the Masters one time. Well, how do we do that? Well, let's get you down there. Or I want to go and see the, um, um, the Stanley Cup final. I don't care who's playing. I just want to go experience it. We can make that happen. So start thinking of things like that that you want to do, things that you want to see and do, and let's make it happen. Go out, have a super fantastic sparkling rest of your day, and we will catch you guys back here tomorrow at 6 p.m. Pacific. And I have to tell you, I have got some great people lined up starting on Monday. So tomorrow I'm going to tell you about who is coming in on Monday, and then Monday will tell you who's coming in on Tuesday. Tuesday will tell you who's coming in on Wednesday. And I think I have somebody Thursday as well. I don't know. But I've got people lined up who want to book in time to come in and chat with you all about living your best life now and how you can do that before the dirt now. Hey, Konara. You ready for your?